Okay, let's get started. I'm having a hard time. This is like the third or fourth attempt at this short lecture, so let's get going. So uh, I want to introduce to you uh, the concept of attribution theory. And uh, this is in the area of social perception, where we're talking about how people perceive other people's actions and behaviors and characteristics. And so everything in the field of attribution is about that how we perceive the characteristics of other people or the actions or behaviors of other people and also how we generally go about making sense of that. And one of the, the leaders of the field and one of the earliest perceptual psychologists is Fritz Heider. And Fritz Heider is a very interesting character in social psychology. Uh, he, first off, he wasn't a psychologist for that long. Uh, he was uh, a philosopher, an artist, a painter. Uh, he taught deaf children and did an innovative things with teaching deaf children. And we were fortunate enough to have Heider in psychology for a few years. And during those few years, he wrote this really fantastic book. Let me get my pen. The Psychology of Interpersonal Relationships. And then he left psychology to do something else. Uh, this book was about what he called common sense psychology. And what he did was he took Gestalt perceptual principles. And remember that Gestalt psychology is a uh, you know, theory of perceptual psychology. He took these Gestalt principles of perception and then breathtakingly translated them into the social world. So he took the idea of, you know, the fact that when a door opens, we still see it as a rectangle, even though it should appear as a trapezoid, uh, and that size consistency and shape consistency. He took ideas like that and translated it into the social world about, well, when people are in different situations, we still th see them as the same. And it was just an amazing and beautiful uh, book to a psychologist. Uh, so let's talk about the idea of common sense psychology and uh, Gestalt, the, and the important Gestalt principles. So first off, uh, when we talk about common sense psychology, or he called it folk psychology or everyday psychology, he's really talking about this idea of the naive scientist. Naive means uneducated or not professional. Uh, and he's saying that everyday people are scientists and that they act just like scientists. Like scientists, they logically test hypotheses about other people's behavior. You want to know why a person behaves in a certain way, and so you develop hypotheses. Well, I think that person behaves that way because they're a nice person. And so that's a hypothesis, and then you collect information to test that hypothesis. And we do that for two primary goals. One is to form a coherent view of the world, that is to understand what's going on just for the sake of understanding. Human beings seem to have the desire or drive to understand the world and to master it. And then uh, the other primary goal is to gain control of the environment. Because if I now know that somebody is a nice guy, I can use that to my advantage or I can predict what would happen to me if I get into interactions with them. So, the idea of common sense psychology is that people generally act like scientists, they form hypotheses about the world, and they test them. Uh, Gestalt psychology, one of the major principles of Gestalt psychology is the idea of closure, or closure of figures. That's actually where the term Gestalt comes from. Gestalt, mm, translated into English, means figure. And the principle of closure states that we tend to want to close open figures. And we see that this image here is a panda, but you notice that it's not finished. Even though this is not a finished image, our mind's eye more or less finishes it and makes it into a panda. And then another more striking example is over here on the right. Uh, we see like we have these three Pac-Men here who are having a conversation, but we see these three semicircles, but it's almost impossible not to see that triangle. And let me erase stuff. 
so that you can clearly see it. Uh, yeah, look at that. You cannot not see that triangle. And this is all based on the principle whoops, of closure. I need my pen back. There. The principle of closure, that is, what our mind will do is close open figures. Now let's think about that for a second. What that means is this. In order to look at these three Pac-Men and see a triangle, what we have to do is we have to already know what a triangle is. And so we have to have beforehand or a priori a triangle in our mind and the process of perception is a process of projecting out what's already known or reading out what's already known and applying it to what we're perceiving and that's uh, you know what's important about the idea of closure now to show you how uh, Heider took these gestalt ideas and translated them into uh, social perception. Let's take a look at the Heider Simmel illusion. Heider developed it with his graduate student Simmel, uh, and he did uh, have this illusion to illustrate exactly what I've been talking about. So the film is a very short film, like a minute and a half. Uh, I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm, I'm going to ask you to stop the video and take a minute or two to write up a paragraph description of what happened, what happened in the film, and uh, then we'll talk about that. Okay, so it's over, and uh, you know, stop the video and write up a paragraph about what happened. And of course, you can go back and, and take a look at uh, the video again. So you're back. So what happened? And since I can't a listen to you uh, because this is a, a video, uh, for me, I always saw a love triangle. Pardon the pun. Uh, in that, uh, the circle was uh, the girlfriend. And the triangle was the guys, and you had a big guy. I kind of see this like if you know Popeye and Olive Oil and Brutus, uh, a Popeye, Olive Oil, and Brutus type love triangle where Brutus was in love with Olive Oil, but Olive Oil wanted Popeye, and Popeye and Olive Oil had to figure out how to get uh, you know together around uh, the huge, gigantic uh, brute of Brutus. Uh, other st you know, students would often refer to what's going on as a domestic violence situation or a family uh, situation in that you had a parents and parents and a child uh, but even uh, beyond that uh, everybody seems to talk about how the big triangle smashed up the room and that's a very human term to use when we're describing a uh, animated character an animated geo uh, geometric uh, character or we often, some uh, people often say the circle was scared or the triangle was scared. And again, scared is a human term uh, that we apply to humans, not to, you know, circles and, and triangles. They don't have emotions. So why are we using these terms when we're watching this video? And in fact, uh, I really doubt that anybody in the class watched that seriously and did not at some point refer to 
uh, the geometric figures with gender. And I've never seen any, you know, and I've been able to get people who will say, well, no, I just saw circles and triangles, and I said, well, tell me what happened. And as they try to describe things about how things happened, they'll usually slip and say, well, he was, you know, angry at what was going on, or he started uh, breaking up the room. Uh, the point that Heider wanted to make is that we have these ideas that pre-exist in our mind about family, about gender, about behavior. And just like everything else in Gestalt psychology, we uh, see something that's a unfinished or unclosed image, we will do things to close that image. We will pro project out or read out what we already understand to close that image. So we're watching these three geometric figures move around pretty randomly and that's a broken or unclosed figure and we need to make sense out of it to understand what's going on and the way that we normally do that is to ascribe human motivation and human uh, desires for that or to attribute gender to them, attribute motivations or attribute desires. And Heider's final point with the illusion is that uh, this ability that we have is so ingrained in us and we do it so easily that we're going to do it even in situations where we shouldn't when we're watching geometric figures randomly move around. And so that was Heider's amazing contribution to social psychology and being Heider he went on to something else and so because he went on to something else he didn't really do anything else in psychology and so to continue on the story of attribution we have to pick up a couple years later either with Harold Kelly or with Jones and Davis uh, in their theories the uh, you know Kelly's very very successful attribution theory and Jones and Davis's very very difficult and not very successful theory of correspondent inference if it's difficult and not very successful why are we still talking about it today? Well, you'll be really surprised when you hear the answer. So take care.